What is the best beginner camera and how do we even know how to choose? If you clicked on this video, you're probably a beginner looking to buy your first camera and with there's so many options out there, how do we even know which is the right one to choose? Hi, my name is Tim and if you're new here, welcome to this video. But before I tell you which camera brand that you should go for and which camera brand that I chose, there are five things that you need to know first so that you'll know which is the best camera that is right for you. And the first thing you need to do is intention you need to be clear what you're going to use the camera for. Is this for YouTube? Do you want to be a photographer? And which kind? Do you want to be a landscape photographer? street photographer, wedding photographer? Do you want to do some vlogging? Do you want to be a hybrid shooter where you want to do both photo and video? Or do you want to be a filmmaker or a cinematographer? Intention is crucial because as we go through the next steps, if we're not clear with our intention, then you might make some mistakes and it's going to be expensive mistakes. So you need to be clear on what you're going to use the camera for. You need to be clear of what your intentions. And once you know your intention, then we can move on to the next stage, which is the camera types. If you want to do this for vlogging, then you might want something that's easy to use, compact, lightweight, all in one that includes the lens and microphone because you don't want any bad footage or any bad audio. If you want to be a hybrid shooter, then you might want to get a camera that can interchange lens, that can do both uh, video and photo. If you want to be a photographer, or in this case, you want to be a wedding photographer or a professional photographer, then you want to get a camera that has large megapixels, can interchange lens, has great autofocus. If you want to be a YouTuber, then you want a camera that can shoot in 4K. If you want to be a filmmaker or a cinematographer, then you might need to get a cinema camera. And once we're clear with the intention, now we will have an idea on what camera then we want. Then we can move ahead to step three, which is budget. So the third step is budget. And for beginners, budget is one of the biggest considerations because you are just starting out. You don't have a lot of funds and you're not making money yet from what you're using the camera for. So are you looking for a camera that is all in one under a thousand dollars? meaning that it has a lens, it has a microphone, uh, you know, it has a flip out screen, like it's all in one, it's built in, it's easy to use. Are you looking for something that's under $1,000? You gotta consider other stuff as well in your camera, as such as lenses. Do you have budget for lenses? So you need to be clear realistically on your specific budget because not all of us are in the same stage in life. So there are some things that you need to consider. You wanna stick to just $1,000? Can you spend a little bit more? Can you spend a little bit less? Is there some things that you don't really need so you can save money on them? Is the camera going to be stationary, meaning that it's just going to be in the tripod and it's going to stay there the entire time? Then you probably don't need in-body stabilizations in your camera and in your lenses. So then you can save money that way. So you need to be clear on your budget. Are you looking for a full frame? Are you looking for an APIC sensors? Because those are the things that can save you money and you need to be clear on your budget. And once again, it comes back to your intention. And if you're looking to be a professional photographer, then you need to invest in uh, an expensive gear. And unfortunately, that is the truth. And so you need to be realistic as well on where your budget are. So you might need to save a little bit more to get the, re the camera that you really, really want for the intention that you really need it for. Now, before we get to the rest of the video, packaging in YouTube is so important, such as our titles and thumbnails is so important in YouTube. And if you want to land a career in graphic design or you feel like your experience is holding you back from getting the career that you really, really want, then I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University or SNHU. SNHU is one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the nation. And I want to talk to you about the graphic design degree. In this program, you get to turn your creative ideas to concept design and digital media. And with this program, you get to complete this degree with a portfolio you can work with to advance your career or land your first job. What's great about SNHU is that they have multiple terms that start throughout the year and they have 24-7 accessibility so you can complete class whenever it's convenient for you. What's also great with SNHU is they have low tuition rates and they're one of the lowest in the nation. So use my link snhu.edu slash GD and the link is in the description below where you can find free information regarding the bachelor's degree in graphic design. When you press that free information, a real person will hop on a call and discuss how the program will benefit you personally. So once again, use my link snhu.edu slash GD to get free 
free information regarding the bachelor's degree in graphic design or any other degrees that SNHU has to offer. Thank you SNHU for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the rest of the video. So once we're clear with our intention, once we're clear with the idea of the camera that we want, once we're clear with the budget that we're going to have, then we can move on to brands. And because we did the hard stuff already earlier with our intention, camera types, uh, budget, choosing a brand then comes a lot easier. But the unfortunate truth is not all brands are built the same. All brands have their own advantages and disadvantages. So let's look at Sony first. In my opinion, Sony cameras tends to be the most versatile, meaning that they have a lot of options from budget to more expensive, from APS-C all the way to uh, full frame. They have a lot of options for lenses. Uh, and it's not just for Sony lenses, they have third party as well, such as Sigma, Tamron, and Samyang, where you can uh, buy their lenses and it'll fit on a Sony camera. In my opinion, Sony has the best autofocus and it's great for both photo and video. Although it's some creators, including myself, I have trouble with color grading my footage when it comes to Sony cameras. The color profiles isn't really the best in my opinion, but obviously I'm not perfect and I need to work on my color grading skills. For Canon cameras, creators say they have great autofocus, they have great color profiles. Uh, there's some wobbling that is involved and uh, it's great for both photo and video. Now, I haven't tested a lot of Canon cameras, so I can't really say as much in this topic. Those are just some things that I hear, and it's definitely worth uh, doing our own research when it came, comes to these cameras. Now, if you want to take photos that kind of looks like film, then you might need to go for Fujifilm because of their film simulators. Some people also use Fujifilm for some videos. Now, I haven't really used it as well, but once again, it all comes down to our own research when it comes to these cameras. Now, once again, we need to be clear on what we want to use the camera for because maybe you want to be a filmmaker or a cinematographer then you need to invest in a cinema camera or a cinema line uh, such as the RED or the Sony, such as the FX3 or FX30. Now, once again, just to be clear, we need to make our own uh, informed decision on which brand to buy. And so that means we need to do our own research on which brands that we want to use uh, for uh, what we need to use the camera for. The reason why we need to be clear on the camera brand is because the fifth step is commitment. Lastly, you finally picked your brand. The fifth consideration is commitment. How committed are you to your intention or what do you want to use the camera for? How committed are you into being a YouTuber, a photographer, a filmmaker, cinematographer, or a hybrid shooter? How committed are you? Because once you picked your brand, you've kind of committed yourself into a long run with that brand. So if, for example, if you have invested in Canon cameras, then you need to invest in Canon lenses, you need to invest in you know, gear that is associated with Canon. Now, before I tell you which camera I decided to go with and what is my recommended decision for you on which camera that you should get, I just wanted to point out that it is not about our gear that makes a great photo or video. It is about our cre own creativity. The reason why you can make great photos, you can make great films, you can make great video, it's not because of the gear, but it's because of your own creativity that you brought into the world. So in my opinion, if you're a beginner right now and you're in a budget, you know, you don't have any budget at all, the best camera for you is the best camera that's available for you right now. If you have an old camera and you're looking to upgrade, the best camera for you is to stick to that camera and make the most out of that camera, make the best uh, art that you can make with that camera, make the best photos, videos with that camera that you currently have. If you don't have any budget at all, then the best camera that you have is your smartphone. So don't let gear hinder you from creating something that is amazing. Do something remarkable with something that you have right now. If you've gone through steps one to five and you wanna know about my recommendation or what you should get for your first camera, then my recommendation is the Sony cameras. <clears throat> so right now I shoot with the Sony a 600 and it is great because it is an APS-C camera, so it saves money there. Uh, it can shoot in 4K and it's great for photos. The reason why I bought this camera is because it can do great for both photos and videos. I like doing landscape photography and YouTube. And once again, as I mentioned earlier, Sony, I believe is the most versatile. You can get a lot of options and there's a lot of budget options as well as lens options for you. This camera right now costs brand new, uh, around $1,700 brand new. And I'm using the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. 
to shoot this video and that costs about $500 brand new, but you can get those a lot cheaper when you buy them used. Now, if I were to recommend a camera and you wanna go lower than that budget, then my recommendation is the Sony A6100 or the Sony ZV-E10. Now, both of them cost about the same price. Uh, the difference is that the intention for the cameras differ uh, when it comes to photos and videos. The A6100 is focused mainly on photos and the Sony ZV-E10 is mainly focused on videos. Both of them are interchangeable lenses, but with the A6100, it has a viewfinder, while the Sony ZV-E10 includes, doesn't have a viewfinder, but it includes a microphone and a flip out screen to the side. And the ZV-E10 is useful if you really wanna use it for videos because uh, the A6100 does come with a built-in mic, but it's not as good as the ZV-E10. So both of them cost the same price. And if you buy the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, you're looking at total of $1,500 uh, brand new for uh, the CVE10 or A6100 with a Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. And with these cameras being a few years old, you can buy them pretty cheap and as well as used and people will probably get you a good deal for them. You finally decided that you're gonna buy a camera. Now click on this playlist right here to see my recommendation on lenses and which lens you should buy for what you want to use that camera for. See you on the next video.